We hope you're enjoying the Mutual Audio Network. Stick around, there's much more to come. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. The Saga of the European King now has a Patreon so you can support our performers, musicians and producers. In turn, you'll join our super secret clubhouse and get access to exclusive content. Go to patreon.com slash saga of the European King and subscribe. Thank you. The Saga of the European King Chapter 21 The King is Savagely Beaten A New Friend When the King flew off after the ex-Queen's rocket ship, Axe Axewound had been more invested than most to find him. He'd employed his inborn Celtic tracking instincts to go to the office of a private detective. It had gone down like this. first client of the month damn near knocked the glass out of my door. It wasn't just that the gentleman was over eager to get inside, it was that he was sure that hammering harder was the best way to get his business done fast. Hi, are you Google Gorilla? Nice axe, kid. We'll leave it outside. Take a seat. As to your question, I know exactly three sleuths who are also great apes. One of them's dead, the other's in the nut house. Now, don't know about you, but I never heard of any mental institutions on the third floor of a paperboard tenement in the flea bit inside of town. Let's assume I'm the third one. Well, I heard you were the best. You found the cure for the prince when he was turned into stone. I'm gonna be strict with you and say that wasn't my finest hour. The case was exactly as it was cracked up to be. Turned out that geek Terrathor had the it Turned out Terrathor had it. I. I like you, kid. Have to say, I heard you taking out rats and woodlice on your way up here. Way it hurt to me, you're a decent man making do in a world where decency is a handicap. Well, I may be straightforward, but I'm not decent. I've sworn to do a terrible thing to a very good man. And that's who you want me to find. Well, yeah. Well, well no. I, well, well, oh, oh, yes. I, it's the king, and I, I need to kill him someday for his crimes. And he is missing, and yes, I do need to find him, but it's not so I can kill him. I'm gonna lead this out nice and neat, the way I like my whiskey, so we can both see it plain as day. You want me to take a high-profile case already shot full of holes in the full knowledge that you, my client, is willfully murderous and possessed of traditional old country madness. Did you see something about whiskey? Look, it's a little early to be diving into an empty crater of bombed-out oblivion, Mr. X. No, 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 this is how we always find people. This is a finding potion, this is. It's the way we do it back home. Ha! Huh. I'll humor you with your mixed-up ethnic moxie and cheap liquor. But let me say, it doesn't help my sense of unease with this rotten case, nor does it shake a flake of my default pessimism free from my rain-faded coat. And so Axe Axe Wound and Gogo Gorilla got hooched up until they found themselves in the new world outside the very temple fortress where the king was being held prisoner. Well, congratulations, Mr. Axe Wound. We found the king. I'll admit it straight up. I was convinced your methods were a result of a depraved upbringing and tragic delusion. But I'm just blitzed enough to consider this scene of confluence is more than sheer dumb luck. So how did you guys get here? I don't exactly remember. The memories are as pale as the face of a man caught in the act. After he swore he'd done his last. I, th I think at one point we became cowboys. I found in my jacket pocket a page from my notebook. Thursday, shut down by dragon. He had a look in his eyes like empty streets the night before payday. Slick in the filthy rain. Don't look at me. <laughs> Axe, who's the lady? She's got asymmetric design, so I know she's going to be important. My name is Astrid Gimmerlek. I am Axe's girlfriend. What? Well, yeah. Yes, you are a very sweet and caring man, and I am taken with your charms. We have been on four dates and have agreed to be exclusive and to text each other every day. Axe, this is a joyous thing. When did you get a girlfriend? I... <sighs> I thought I was more into guys. He and his Corinquium burst into my excavation site playing football with an empty can of Fresca while dressed in elaborate cowboy costume. Soon he had told me some jokes, to which he fumbled the punchlines, and then he overshared some details about his parents and told me he loved me. I was unmoved by his foolishness. The last straggler in my memory party offers up a reconciliatory gift, the kind bought from a dime store by the tram stop on the end of your street. There was a, a turf war. 
Some overgrown playground scuffle between tribes that only a practiced eye could tell the difference between. My field of research is, let us say, contentious with those who are ignorant and prejudiced. When our dig was ambushed by Dr. Fritjob's berserkers, Axe slaughtered them like a perfect darling. <laughs> Axe is a perfect darling at slaughtering! So I drafted him as my bodyguard and boyfriend as we marched on the Mask Temple to present my field notes to Lord Rage Eater himself. I guess I tagged along too. Yes, you are a relentless third wheel. Well, all this dovetails nicely with my own plans. I am about to confront and murder Eric Rageeter for holding me in Viking prison and taking my gear. It's a good thing you guys showed up because it probably would have been tricky to take him on alone. Axe, my sweet, you will not help this strange little man for obvious reasons of loyalty to me and also because Eric Rageeter is the one who signs off on my research grants. <sighs> Look at me skewered on the horns of a dilemma. I'm torn between my loyalties to my king and my devotion to my true love, Tracy. No, Axe! You're ramping up the drama! It was at this moment that some guards noticed that several bizarrely dressed people were arguing loudly in the ruins of the very prison cells that it was their job to guard, and came to the conclusion that as guards, it was almost certainly in their duty to put a stop to such irregular congress. <laughs> The conflict with the Viking guards was a welcome relief from the difficult situation that had arisen. Although it was quite difficult all by itself, fighting Viking was still uncharted territory to the king and he had had nothing equipped at all except for his new hands. To top it off, Gogo Gorilla wasn't really a combat class and Astrid hadn't officially joined the party yet, even though we all know by now that she will eventually. Axe and Gogo Gorilla had been making do up until then with a foolproof plan. Gogo Gorilla would say something acidic about the heritage or class of their enemies, initiating a charge, and he'd then bounce out of the way using his special shoes, and Axe would jump out and chop them up. Though in this situation, the guards were just as likely to target the king as Gogo Gorilla. As it was, the king could only take four or five fatal woundings and had received three before Axe brought down the guards. Look at that, Axe. Your king is gushing blood from most of his observed apertures. <laughs> oh, I... Yeah, you're right. He's... He's bleeding. <laughs> Quick! Somebody give me some sweets or some herbs to stuff into my wounds! <laughs> well, I've got a fancy word and a light step. And we, um, we drank a lot of potions so we could come and find you. Just eat their hearts, you wimps. Their hearts? The heart of a Vikinka is full of health and courage. Look, you just rip it from the chests of these glorious losers... And shove it in your face. Well, I wouldn't want to look like a wuss. Here. Okay. Oh. Mm. These hearts really hit the spot. Oh. I've come to murder you, Rage Eater. No, no, sorry. I absolutely forbid it. You better come up to my business so we can. Sort this shiznit <clears throat> The king, Astrid Gimelec, Axe Axund, and Gogo Gorilla entered the sweet crib of Eric Rage Eater. The walls were covered in posters of troubled musicians exhaling smoke from their mouths in monochrome high definition. Every table had on it a pile of weapons and armor so magical and overpowered that, if they were ever used in battle, the forums would go absolutely nuts. Eric Rage to lay in a hospital bed made of the bones of vanquished enemies with the sheets tucked in very tightly around him. He was cradling Cutty to his chest and Cutty was singing a beautiful, soothing melody. Don't stand there, Gabe. Do I have to call a cop? Come on, everybody, out. Do the murder. Hey! Hey! You got my soul! Hello. Took you long enough to bust out of jail. Your old man could have waxed it in a day. Give me back my horse! Hey, keep it chill, dog. Who have you brought up in here? A Celt must be a brave one. And what's that? A troll? Ah, Astrid, how you busted? My team has made some excellent discoveries. That's a realness we can all enjoy. What deal zizzles did you discover? 
We found box sets and music magazines that seem to indicate that the original Inca were into cool stuff like we are. How cool are we talking? Excuse me! In my report, I outlined the hypothesis that they might have been cool enough to ascend to Viking heaven upon their death. For shizzle? For shizzle, right. my lord. Listen, I am just gonna stop throwing punches. The king did indeed start throwing punches rocket punches. He smacked Eric Rajita right in his ancient chin until he was distracted from his conversation and decided to do something to stop that from happening again. Hey now, little monkey, you're being all sorts of rowdy. We're gonna take this thing here straight into the stratosphere. The Viking Lord pulled an orange cord hanging down from the ceiling, and his bone bed unfolded and contorted into a nimble battle mech. It had four arms, and each arm was programmed with a different martial art. No, no, wait, hey, I, I don't have any armor on- oh! oh! Things were heating up between the old men. There was a kind of hurting ability to their fight, the kind that knocks the wind out of you from its hospital bed with robot arms. I'm not your stuff. Cuddy, you traitor! I'm gonna be a traitor from just the thing, hmm? Axe, I approve of your friend's moxie, but why would he be punching Lord Rage Eater? Oh, um... Aye, the, the king's dad was enemies with Rajita, and he's like, well, we in the old world, we think he's a proper, you, you know. What is this movement you are doing with your hand? He is, what, a source of hand jobs? That seems highly unlike Lord Rajita. I have never witnessed him manually masturbate persons of any number. Well, I, don't worry, your highness, I've never met a transforming battle suit. Warned by Eric Rajita that I couldn't chop up with my axe. axe. Dearest, remember that your loyalties are divided on this matter. Oh, aye, they are, aren't they? The king rolled and dodged, but his attacks were ineffectual, and whenever he paused, he was hit with martial arts. And after each beating, Eric Rajita tossed him a piece of his missing gear. Look what I've dropped now, it's this cool bracelet. Don't, don't give that to me now! Why not, dog? It was yours, and it'll help you get you back your flaw. Now it just feels like you're feeling sorry for me. Come on, I'm making it wrong. No, I have to get it all back when you I beat you. You better be ready to fright down, Eric. Whoa now, Captain. Let me get you ran over my bed. That wasn't me, that was my granddad. I look at all of us keeping track of time and distinguishing between generations. Yeah. Ouch! Yeah, you're really putting it raw up on your uncle Ray. Oh, oh no! Oh, I'm getting so hey, messed give up. Me the, give me the blood! Oh, come on! Stop pretending to fight and fight! Give me the blood! All right, little monkey, if that's how you want to pop it. Give me the blood! Eric Ragey to grab the king by the ankle with his judo arm and then smashed him against the stones of the floor until his body was broken and limp. Oh, would you look at that! My hesitation has killed the king. I don't know, it's kind of actually bringing on an anxiety. It's, I'm feeling sad now more than anything. Yeah. Nervous, sad and nervous. Be cool, cuts. Now, which of you bangers agrees with me that it is dinner time? Okay, so just so I'm on the same page as everyone, he's not actually going to kill the king, he's just beating him up. Last I heard, the time was dinner. So... Morally, I'm off the hook for that. Yes, Axe. You failed to make a difficult decision, and you benefited from it. Oh, bro. That's always how these things shake out. I'm sworn to kill the king myself, you see, but it's difficult because he's also my friend, and I'm sworn to protect him from death. My, my. You do often end up skewered on those dilemma horns, don't you? <sighs> yeah. It's my thing, I guess. Well, let me tell you, Axe, it is childish and unbecoming. You must collapse all such probabilities, or I shall break up with you. And I needn't remind you that Vikinka take breakups to be quite literal, mostly pertaining to the sternum, ribcage, and skull. But I need all of those things! What a dilemma! <laughs> That's the end of chapter 21. Sweet Sue has been tied to the railroad tracks. Will our hero save her? Well, of course, the hero always prevails on Thriller Thursdays. I'm John Bell, the hero that rarely prevails in Bells in the Bat Free, the comedy show you can hear every Friday Follies and a bunch of Sunday showcases. Help. 
Oops, looks like the hero may have been a tad late there. <laughs>